Hey, welcome to Word of Faith Church Online. We are excited that you're joining us this morning. I want to take this time before the service starts to say Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers out there. And I want to give a special Happy Father's Day to my spiritual father, your spiritual father, Bishop Keith A. Butler. Bishop, on behalf of the entire Word of Faith family and the ministerial staff, Happy Father's Day. And the ministers, we like to show our appreciation for all that you've done for us being our spiritual father. So we'll be giving you a card and a gift just saying thank you and again, Happy Father's Day. Now I know that this service is going to be amazing. Bishop has been giving us words straight from the Holy Ghost that's been changing our lives and this morning will be no different. I wanna remind you about the live chat. We have chat hosts who are waiting for you to jump in the chat and just say hello. We'd love to hear from you. For everybody else, enjoy the service. Hallelujah, hallelujah, come on and praise him.
to the gospel of Christ. I reference Jesus all day, all night. We ain't ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Cause we were bought with a price, say bought with a price. We ain't ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We reference Jesus all day, all night. All the time.
to the Lord, praise his holy name. Uh, we worship you and adore and magnify you. We glorify you, King of kings and Lord of lords. You are our maker. You are our provider. You are our protector. Hallelujah. You are our healer. And you're more than enough. We worship you. We praise your holy name. Glory to God. For you are good and your mercy endures forever. Praise his holy name. Glory to his holy name. Honor to his name. Hallelujah. Yes, we love and adore you, Lord. Our hearts adore you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, no more. Welcome to Word of Faith. Let's take a look at some of the things we have going on this week. Join us Tuesday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. for our early morning prayer call as we pray for our family, our church, our community, and the world. Call 425-585-7183. Listen to the entire message over the phone during our call-in service times. Call 425-585-7183 on Sundays at 3 p.m. and Thursdays at 12 p.m. Kids World is here to provide lessons for your K-5th through grader. This week's lesson is about trusting God. Right at our website at wordoffaith.cc slash kidsworldresources. As a church, Word of Faith is always looking for ways to help those in our local community. Hospitals are in danger of experiencing a massive shortage of blood caused by the many blood drives being canceled due to the school and other organizational closures related to the COVID-19 outbreak. To prevent this, we are partnering with the American Red Cross to help provide blood for our local hospitals. We're asking our church family and friends to make and keep an appointment to give blood to the American Red Cross. Let's put our faith in action by serving others. Go to wordoffaith.cc slash redcross to make your pledge today. Don't forget to share with your family and friends. Thank you, Word of Faith. Word of Faith has several job openings in the Building Operations Department. Please review the job descriptions posted on the church bulletin boards in the lobbies and send resumes as indicated. Calling All Glorify God Youth will be open for youth service every Sunday at 11 a.m. in the 620 room, Lower Chapel. All youth, grades 6 through 12, are welcome. So, come expecting to hear a word from the Lord just for you. Remember to bring your PPE, and we continue to practice social distancing. Hope to see you there. And don't forget our weekly youth Zoom service every Thursday at 7 p.m. For access to the Zoom service link and all other up-to-date information regarding youth, please visit us on Instagram at Glorify God. What's up, youth? I want to remind you that we're continuing our weekly devotionals that have been made just for you. So please make sure you check out the weekly devotions by going to wordoffaith.cc forward slash youth. And make sure you stay up to date by following us on Instagram at underscore glorify God underscore. I'll see you online. Get ready for the 2020 Women's Conference. Handcrafted, live by design. Thursday, June 25th through Saturday, June 27th. We're welcoming special guest speakers, Terry Savelle Foy and Heather Lindsay, along with our very own Pastor Michelle Ferguson and hosted by Pastor Deborah Butler. We also have an exciting new update. Friday night of the conference, we welcome our special musical guest, award-winning gospel artist, Vicki Winans. So get your girls together and meet us in person or online. For more information, visit us online at wofwc.com. See you there. 
Join us Wednesday evening for midweek Bible service and next weekend for our Saturday and Sunday services. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the Word of Faith app, and at wordoffaith.cc. Well, it's offering time, amen? Let's go to the scripture. Luke 6, 38 tells us that we should give, and it shall be given unto us a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure ye meet, wherewithal it shall be measured back unto you again. The windows of heaven are open unto you so that fruit may abound to your account when you give. Amen. There are five different ways that you can give here at Word of Faith. Number one, you can give in person. We have offering receptacles in every lobby as well as one in the receptionist area that you can come and fill out your envelope and drop it right in the slot. Number two, you can do it via text. That phone number is 248-200-5490. You can also do it online by by doing wordoffaith.cc slash giving. Number four, you can phone in your office by calling 248-419-4933 during normal business hours or by mail. You can write it out in your own personal envelope, Word of Faith International Christian Center. You know, do that accounts payable, 20,000 West Nine Mile, Southfield, Michigan, 48075. Now let's go to our confession. Amen. Glory to God. Are you ready? Because we are tithers, the windows of heaven are open. The blessing is pouring out. Because we are sowers, we are furnished in abundance for every good work. We receive our jobs, perfect assignments, raises and bonuses, contracts, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritances, interest, income, rebates and returns and checks in the mail, supernatural wealth transfer, scholarships, tuitions paid in full, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, and properties acquired. We are getting our buildings, our lands, our houses, our vehicles, and our equipment and our airplanes. God is bringing into our hands seed. We command our abundant harvest to come. Abundant harvest come now. Harvesting angels, go and get it and bring it to us right now in Jesus' name, for we have need of it for the gospel's sake as well as our own. And everybody said, amen. <laughs> He made a way I don't know how but he did it He made a way Standing here Not knowing how we'll get through this test But holding on to faith you know best Nothing can catch you by surprise You've got this figured out And you're watching us now And when it looks as if we can't win You wrap us in your arms and step in And everything we need you supply you got this in control and now we know that you 
you made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over Yes, you, you made a way And we're standing here Only because you made a way You made a way And now we're here And we're looking back on where we've come from Because of you and nothing we've done To deserve the love and mercy you've shown Your grace was strong enough to pick us up And you, you made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was Against the wall. 
we're so grateful, we're so grateful, we're so grateful. We're so grateful, praise God. There's only one thing about that song that I need to fix. And that song says, I don't know why you did it. I do know why he did it. Because he loves us. <laughs> Hallelujah. God loves you, amen. Oh, he loves you so much. Father, in the name of Jesus, we humbly approach your throne. We are grateful this morning, as the song said, you constantly have made ways for us. You've done it in ways we didn't know how. We couldn't see how, but you found a way every time. And Lord, we say we are grateful. And we say thank you for your goodness. We humbly approach your word. It is a lamp unto our feet and light unto our path. Man shall not live by bread alone, you declared, but by every word that, that proceeds out of your mouth. And so, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our midst to lead and guide and direct and uplift and speak through these lips of clay, the all-powerful word. We're open, Father, to whatever gifts, graces, anointings, manifestations, or demonstrations of the Spirit you will grant us today. And Father, for whatever you do, we give you and you only all the glory, all the honor or praise. We ask it in that holy, mighty, matchless, and highest authority of all, Jesus of Nazareth. By his precious blood, everyone in agreement said, Amen. Say this with me, hold up your Bible or cell phone or, or pad or whatever it is that you use to watch the word with. Praise God and say, this is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. In it is the words of life to live successfully in this life and in it is the key to eternal life in Jesus name amen you may be seated praise God hallelujah open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6 please amen the Bible is God speaking to us hallelujah since it is, and of course, for those of you watching me via uh, some form of media around the world, amen, I want you to know the Bible is God speaking to you. Here at Word of Faith, we believe the Bible in our statement of faith, we believe that it is inerrant. In other words, we believe that the Bible is correct that we live our life by it, praise God. Do the very best we can to do that and walk by his promises in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Now we're gonna minister, begin today, and I'm gonna continue next week on being strong in the Lord. So we'll read here in Ephesians chapter six, and let's begin reading here with verse 10 as Paul wraps up this long letter that he writes to the church at Ephesus. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. The New Testament is translated from the Greek, and the Greek word for strong is endunamu. Endunamu means to be empowered. It means to be enabled. It means to increase in strength. So he said, my brethren, make sure you are empowered and that you are enabled, that you are continuing to increase, praise God, and be strengthened, and then notice in the kurios, which is the word Lord. The word Lord, praise God, means the highest or the supreme authority. The word Lord also means master. But a lot of times people don't understand the word Lord also means controller. And so there are many Christians that Jesus, they have received as their savior, but they have not received him as their Lord. In other words, they accept the fact that he shed his blood for them and they will accept that he is that. But they are in control of what they think, feel, act, talk, go. Amen. So he isn't their Lord. They're not being led by him. They're being led by themselves or their flesh. Praise God. So when you say Jesus is Lord, you are saying he's the one that controls me. He says, go left, I go left. He says, go right, I go right. And that means I always check with him first. In the Old Testament, it's in Proverbs 3, 5, to acknowledge him in all thy ways, and he would direct that path. Well, being direct is part of submitting 
to lordship. Amen. Praise God. So he said, finally, my brother, in Dumamu, be enabled to increase in the supreme authority and your controller and in the power. Kratos is this word here, power, because in, in, in the Bible, you'll see this word power from the Greek translated uh, actually means several different things. Power can mean authority. It can mean here, kratos, which means vigor, dominion, and strength. Hallelujah. So he said here, be strong in the Lord and in the kratos, in the vigor, in the dominion, in the strength of his iskus. It's the word might, which means his ability or his forcefulness. So you put all this together and you could translate it this way. He said, uh, finally, my brother, be empowered in the supreme authority and in the dominion or control of his ability. Amen. So note, he says, the understood subject of this sentence is this is what you do. So God's not going to grab you and then force you to, to go down this path. This is a path that you choose because God doesn't want any automatons. He wants free moral agents, people who decide not only to serve him, but walk by his methodologies because they choose to do it. Now, he continues to do so in verse 11, continues. So then put on the whole armor of God. Praise God. Excuse me. I mean, the, the full armor. Put on the full armor of God. If he says put on the full armor, that means you can put on a part of it. Yeah, right. Amen. So he tells you, put all of it on. Why? That you may be able to esteem me. That's the word stand, which means to hold up or to continue pros. The word pros means face to face against the wiles of the devil. And that, that Greek word uh, there for wiles is methodia. Method. Amen. Against Satan's method. It also means against Satan's trickery. It means against Satan's strategies. Now, why would Satan have to use trickery and strategies and, uh, as his method? Because he doesn't have power over the believer. You should have said amen to that. So he has to use strategies, and, and Jesus said in Matthew 24, when we studied it earlier this year, we saw that Jesus said the very first thing at the end of days in which we live in, not the last days, the end of days, the end of days in which we live now, that the first thing that uh, would happen is that people would be deceived. Now, one thing about deception is that what makes deception effective is that it always has some truth in it. See, so it may start off with some truth, but inside of it is a whole lot of deception and falsehood. Amen. And it'll be wrapped and have truth wrapped around it, which is why you will need certain things we're about to find out about being strong in the Lord. Amen. So he tells us it is our responsibility to be strong, but he has made that strength, praise God, available to us standing against pros face to face, which means no backing down against the devil. Now, we're going to look at seven keys to perfection. Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, please. Can I get three hallelujahs in A? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God. Let's take a look at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we want to take a look at, uh, amen, starting here with verse 12. We beseech you, brethren, see, hey, brothers, pay attention. Know who he's writing to, brethren, so he's talking to Christians. Do I have any Christians in here? Born again believers, all right. So he says, so we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, know them. And are over you. The word over means to those that preside over you in the Lord, in the supreme authority. And admonish you. So it told you a couple of things. One, he said that there are people who are over you in the Lord. And who preside over you. And that part of their, part of their job, not only, but part of their job is to admonish you. And so their job is not always to say good stuff to you. 
But that their job also sometimes is to set you straight. Amen. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. Turn to Hebrews chapter 13. Keep a finger here because that's my base course. I'm coming back to Thessalonians. Amen. But let's see some other scripture because always in the word of God, you can find something God's talking about multiple times. But Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verse seven says this. Remember them which have the rule over you, because we know he's talking in the Lord, who have spoken unto you the word of God. So now we definitely know we're talking about in the Lord. Whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when we go back to Thessalonians then, so we understand then that God has a hierarchy. God has a way in which things work. And praise God that there's even admonition through those, verse 14, and continuing, and to esteem, which means to consider highly. Amen. Them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves, which means to live peaceably. Amen. Now we exhort you again, praise the Lord. Brethren, warn them or caution them that are unruly, which means disorderly. Amen. Comfort the faint hearted, which is feeble minded. Care for the weak. Be patient, which means being long suffering to all men. See, long suffering means being willing to put up with them. Hallelujah. Anybody here ever had to put up with somebody? Let me ask you another question, though. How many of you people have to put up with you? <laughs> it kind of cuts both ways. Amen. So it said, so be, be long suffering. See that none render evil for evil unto men. In other words, don't give tit for tat. Don't do like children do. You hit me, so I hit you back. That's what children do. Now, keep your finger here. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter six for a minute. I'm going to come right back in Thessalonians. But let's go back to Ephesians chapter 6 because when he says don't give tit for tat. Amen. Let's read the rest of that, he said. In that verse 11. So put on the full armor of God uh, that uh, you may continue face to face against the strategies of the devil and then tells you why. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now a whole lot of people forgot this. I mean, a whole lot of people have forgotten it. Said our fight is not with somebody else in the flesh. Amen. 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 But against four classes of demon spirits, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and against wicked spirits in the heavenlies. And so many people have forgotten this because what Satan's strategy is is to get you to focus on something you see in front of you and not what's behind what you see in front of you. Every person who is not born again is susceptible to one of those four class of demon spirits, if not all four. In other words, a person who has not been made new in Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And it said, praise God, the Holy Spirit's on the inside of us. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Without the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Then if, you're, if your spirit man is not reborn, then that means then what? It means then that you are susceptible to poverty, sickness, death, and everything Satan can throw at you through his demon spirits. And those four classes tells you at what level of which a person can be uh, uh, influenced by the enemy, principalities or smaller one, powers, all the way up to Satan himself. Amen. Amen. That, that officer who put, who put his knee in that young man's neck and killed that man, I believe that man was up to number four. Amen. Satan had total hold of him. You can look right in his eyes and oh, see yes. it. So he's now, now, so what did he tell us? He told us here that your enemy is not who you're looking at. Now, obviously, if your enemy is not who you're looking at, then there must be a way to deal with what's behind them. There are weapons given you as a believer to use against and free those who are bound by these things. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Now let's go back to Thessalonians. Let's continue. Praise the Lord. So he says here, praise God, verse 15 again, see that none retaliates with evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good. That's your course. Always look for what's the good way to go, both among yourselves and to everybody. Amen. So he tells you that our job is to find what is the biblical good course, what is the biblical proper response, even when it's evil for evil. Amen. Now, let's continue. Now, he's going to talk about here seven keys to victory here on the earth. Seven keys. Everybody say seven keys. Seven keys. Say it again. Seven keys. seven keys. Amen. These seven are, I'm just going to read them to you, and then I'm going to comment on them. They are rejoice every more. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things and abstain from all appearance of evil. But now let's, let's break them down. Praise God. So number one here was rejoice evermore. Keep a finger and turn to Philippians chapter four then. Praise God. Amen. Philippians chapter four, and you might as well stay there for a minute because we're going to look at several of them here, Philippians chapter four. But verse four, Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'm telling you to rejoice. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory to God. Amen. Rejoice, he didn't say when you feel like it. He didn't say rejoice when you feel spiritual. He didn't say rejoice when you feel the anointing. He said rejoice always. Rejoice all the time because the joy of the Lord is what keeps you strong. Joy is an expression of faith. Faith is what moves the hand of God. And when you get the hand of God moving, praise God, that's when you get that. I don't know how he did it when you get God moving. Amen. So you have to keep your joy up. Even if when, even you don't feel anointed, you still got to go. Ha, 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 ha. That's key. Number one, the victory. Praise God. He said, rejoice always. The second one here was, he said to pray without ceasing. Don't stop praying. Now notice again in that Philippians chapter four, I said, we're going to also stay there for a minute. So it said, and be careful. Don't allow yourself to be full of anxiety about anything, but in, in, in everything by prayer and supplication, which is a definitive request. And there's the reason for that word supplication, because prayer and supplication, supplication is a specific request. And that request comes because it is based upon something. What the request is based upon is the scripture. It's why God told Israel in Isaiah 55 in the Old Testament, says so in the New Testament too. And what he says, he says, now put me in remembrance. Declare thou that thou might be justified, he said. Then he also said in Isaiah 55, he said, my words like the rain that, call, that falls from heaven. He said, my thoughts are above your thoughts. And then he said, return it back to me because it will not return void. It will not return empty. So the word's supposed to return. It's supposed to come back. Well, how does the word go and then return back to God through your mouth? Amen. You go to the word of God you, and this is how you pray. You go to the scripture you find out what the scripture says about whatever the subject is. And then you go to God and you go, now, Father, your word says, I'm putting you in remembrance. Your word says this about that matter. I decide to hear that. I decide to receive that. I decide to believe that. I decide now I'm doing it. I'm speaking that. And I'm thinking, I'm going to act like it's so. Now, see, that's returning. That's real prayer. Prayer is not describing the problem to God. God, this is happening to me, and so God, I need you to such and such and such. God did not find out about it when you said something. He knew about it long before you ever said it. Come on, somebody. In fact, I guarantee the Holy Ghost was trying to lead you not to fall into it, and you just missed it. Anybody here missed it before? Uh, amen. 
So you don't pray the problem. Speaking the problem doesn't help you the problem. It says in Romans 4, 17, God calls things that be not as though they were. And he taught Abraham to do the same. Abraham didn't call what he called. He called what he wanted to have. Amen. Father of a great multitude. So God said, take my word and pray that back to me. Now, if you do this, this will help you successfully in this life because there are a couple of things. When you return the word back to God, no word from God is void of power. It produces wherever it is placed. But faith also comes by hearing the word. So when you pray that word back, guess, guess what you do? You strengthen your faith. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. By the rhema word, spoken word of God. That's talking about prayer. This is what real prayer is. is praying the word out loud. Strengthen your faith and praise God. Guess what? The more you believe, Jesus said, the more you can have. Mark 11, 23. You, whosoever says then says it at the mountain. Be removed, be cast in the sea. Shall not doubt in his heart. Believe what he says. He'll have what he says. See, so everything works in a circle. Life and everything in the Bible is a circle. Even the throne of God, the scripture said, the throne's in the middle of heaven and everything around heaven is a circle. Amen. Everything works that way. Seed time and harvest is a circle. There's a seed planted and it will circle around back to harvest. Everything's a circle. Prayer is intended to be that way. Are you listening to me? So he said he didn't pray without ceasing. You should always then. Amen. Be describing. If you've got an issue, describing what the word said about it. When you're walking, you do that. Hallelujah. Sitting at home, you do that. I'm preaching better than I'm getting amen. Glory to God. He said, if you do that, you come to the place. You say what God's word says about healing, healing all the time. You say what God's word says about healing. You're not going to be afraid of coronavirus. See, you, see, you get so strong in it. You get so, you, you get so strong spiritually that it just can't kill you. Do you understand? Now, if you don't do all that, then you better. <laughs> I guess you better take all the man-made precautions you can get if you ain't going to do that. Come on, somebody. I ain't dying from no coronavirus. Are you kidding me? No. Yeah, but you, you're in mid-60s, yep. You're a black male, yep. You live in the city, yep. Ain't you all that they said? Yep. May fall, a thousand may fall by my side, my right hand, but not me. I say it too much every single day. I'm strong on the subject. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. Now, so he said, number one, he said, rejoice evermore. Two, pray without ceasing. And there's that Philippians again. And amen. This is convenient, so I'll just stay here. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in everything, by prayer and definite request with thanksgiving. See, that number three was in everything, give thanks. In it. In it. So you're in the eye of the hurricane, man. I mean, everything around you being ripped up. He said, in everything, give thanks. The word thanks, thanksgiving is the word gratitude. Gratitude for what? Because I know I'm not going to be staying here. Amen. Corinthians said, this is temporary, subject to change. I keep on saying what God said is going to change. Hallelujah. So I just want to thank you in advance. Anybody can give thanks after it's already happened. Ain't no faith in that. The faith is giving thanks, praise God, while you're still in the middle of the hurricane. Hallelujah. He said, with thanksgiving, let that request be made known unto God and the peace of God. Passive our human comprehension shall keep, which means the word there, keep means guard. It will guard your heart and guard your mind. Keep you from going tilt. Now let's go back to Thessalonians. Praise his holy name. There about seven keys to perfection. I'm going to tell you why I use the word perfection shortly. But he said, rejoice every more. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. Then the fourth one here is, quench not the spirit. 
The word quench means to extinguish, like you take a fire extinguisher and put a fire out. Did you know you can put out the Holy Spirit's operation in your life? Sure you can. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible is God speaking unto us. We believe the B-I-B-L-E Bible. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 says, And grieve not, which means no, don't make sad. Don't make sad the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed to the day of redemption. Well, how do I grieve the Holy Spirit? Not listen to him. So first of all, you got to ask the question, where is he? First John 4, 4, you have got little children, have overcome them because greater is he that is, that is in you than he that's in the world. Praise God. Jesus said in John 14, John 16, I send you the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because to see if you'll not neither know of him, but you know him for he shall be with you and shall be in you. Jesus said, I will send you another comforter that shall abide with you forever. Glory to God. He said, Jesus said that he will hear what the father says and will show it unto you and make sure you knew things to come. Hallelujah. But all that is of no benefit if you don't listen to the Holy Ghost. He's on the inside of here. So that means then we don't let this guide first, or even this guide first. We let this guide first because that's where he is. Amen. Hallelujah. There's the voice of the Holy Spirit. There's the prompting of the Holy Spirit. There's the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But it requires taking time with him to get it. Okay, amen. Now, this beautiful woman over here, my wife, I know that woman. I know her better than everybody on earth. Everybody. Why? Because ain't nobody lived with her as long as I have. Okay, her brother and sister lived, lived with her until she was 18 and all that. But I've lived with her for 45 years. I know her better than anybody else. She know me better than anybody else. Come on, somebody. Now, I can tell you then, I, I know the things that, that will make us smile. I know the things that will get a different reaction. <laughs> Sunday, hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Why? Because of all the time I've spent with right. You come to learn the ways of the Spirit because you spend a significant amount of time. Okay, amen? amen? The average person spends 20 times more time watching television than they do listening to God. Okay, amen. So then it's no wonder that it's difficult for them to discern the spirit because they have very little interaction. For many Christians, the only interaction they have at the spirit at all is when they come to church. And that's just a little bit because the primary way that's intended is for when you are at home. In your worship and praise time before God Almighty. You, you come to a point, however, that you, you learn how to follow that peace or you come to follow that lack of peace, almost that buzzer on the inside says, uh, uh, nope. And your eyes may say, yeah, but then, uh, right, 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 right. <laughs> nope, <laughs> hallelujah. And your eyes may say, no, but the spirit says, that's it, follow it. Amen. Amen. Now, the Holy Spirit is quenched or made sad when you don't listen because God only has the Spirit in you for one purpose to bless you, to lead you around the wiles of the devil, to make sure He can't kill, steal, and destroy you. Are you listening to me? And God sat then because you didn't, you didn't take advantage of what he made available to you. So on these seven keys, so he said, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything gives thanks. Quench not the spirit. The fifth one he said here was, despise not prophesying. So turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Thank you for that amen. Hallelujah in the back. Glory to God. I know it's a little harder to do with these masks. I get it. Hallelujah. I know it. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I, I got to cut y'all a little slack. Come on. 1 Corinthians 14, 39. 
It says, wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues, but let all things be done decently and in order. Now, he said, covet to prophesy. Now, just because you prophesy, what is a, what is a prophecy in the context of 1 Corinthians 14? It is a divinely inspired utterance in a known tongue. This is not foretelling or forth telling per se. Because you prophesy doesn't make you a prophet. Amen. Any more than the fact that you drive your Chevy at home doesn't make you a race car driver. Amen. Okay, you ain't ready for the Indy 500. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it is a divinely inspired utterance in a known tongue. We didn't have one in this service today. We did last night. But praise God. Hallelujah. He said, don't despise it because it is from the Holy Ghost. And it's always for your edification, exhortation, and comfort. In other words, he's saying, don't despise the movement of the Spirit. When you come together, there may be a prophecy. There, there may be diverse kinds of tongues of interpretation. There may be moves of the Holy Ghost. And don't go... I don't see why you got to do all that. I don't believe that. I don't know, such and such and such. Instead of going there, praise God. Understand that God speaks to us in varying ways, and he will speak to us the way he wants to speak to us, and not necessarily the way we decided. Amen. Amen. I don't care how God wants to speak to me. Just speak to me. Faith comes by hearing the word. Amen. Faith is acting on, praise God, the word. I need the word in order to do anything. Give me the word. Okay, amen. Now, I'm going to spend a little bit of time before I sit down here with number six. So as we go back to Thessalonians, praise God. Number six here was to prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. So what did he tell you? He told you, the word prove means to examine everything. He said, so don't just grab it because you see it. Just because it's shining, because it sounds good, and everybody else running that way. He said, examine everything. Keep the good part. So there could be things, amen, that are here that you may be involved in, but you may find out there's some bad stuff in it. But the key word is to examine. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. so that means you can't depend on ABC, NBC, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, CSC, Span, whoever else you want. Okay? You cannot take their information. You can't take the crowd's information. You got to examine and go to the scripture and examine it in light of the scripture if you are a believer. Amen. Now, if you're not, it's a whole different matter. Amen. Okay, amen? So if someone wants to examine Word of Faith, they can go right to our website, and they can see what we believe and why. Our statement of faith, or what we believe is out there, is clear. Yeah, amen? amen? Now, I had a young, young man come to me recently, and the message that I did about a month ago and talking about how these things open for stuff like coronavirus, Okay, and other things, and talked about eight American presidents and what happened with each one. And so one young man watched that, and he said to me, he said, he said Bishop, he said, now that was, uh, he said, that was really good. He said, that was, what did he use the word he used? That was on fire, he said. He said, he said that was on fire. He said, I like it when you take current events and you put the word to it. He said, you need to do that some more. I said, I said all right, well, I'll do that. So I'm going to do that right now then. I'm going to take stuff that's happening right now and do that very thing. All right. Praise God. So let's take a look at Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Now, you can go right to the website with your phones right now. And you can go to, I looked this up yesterday. You can go to blacklivesmatter.com. I'm going to read you verbatim. Word for word. Ain't my word. I didn't write it. This is their official website. I am going to read. Let me say, before I get down in it, the first half of the Black Lives Matter website, stuff in it, I definitely agree. I agree. You need to eliminate police brutality. 
Uh, I agree, people should be treated equally regardless of who they are. Hallelujah, when it comes to the law. Okay. Amen. I believe there should be colorblind justice. I agree with every single solitary syllable of all that. Okay. But then you keep reading. So let's keep reading. I'm even going to tell you what paragraph. Okay. Paragraph 15. We make space for transgender brothers and sisters to participate and lead. So the first question is, what's a transgender? A transgender is a person who may be born a male, but has decided that I will not accept that. So I wish to be a female, for example, all right? Paragraph 16, we are self-reflective and do the work required to dismantle, which means to, to take apart. Cisgender privilege. What is cisgender privilege? Let's look it up. Cisgender privilege refers to a person whose sense of personal identity and gender corresponds with their birth sex. So we want to dismantle those who think that this is a privilege. Keep reading. And uplift black trans folk, especially black trans women, who continue to be disproportionately impacted by trans antagonistic violence. I think there's a theme we keep reading here. Paragraph 20, we disrupt, which means we violently overthrow. We disrupt the Western proscribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable, no father mentioned. Now note what it says. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure. So then you have to stop. What is the Western prescribed nuclear structure? And where did they get it? I'm going to read at the end of the message where they got it from. But I'll tell you where, what the Western nuclear family structure is. It is there is a father and a mother and children. Male, female, children. We disrupt that. I'm reading verbatim, word for word. We, this is 21, paragraph 21, we foster a queer, Q-U-E-E-R, dash affirming network. When we gather, we do so with the intention of freeing ourselves from the tight grip of heteronormative thinking. What is heteronormative thinking? That is believing that only heterosexual relationships are normal or right. So if you believe that men are supposed to be with men and women are supposed to be with women, Black Lives Matter said, we're here to free you from that thinking. Keep reading, or rather, the belief that all in the world are heterosexual unless he slash she or they disclose otherwise. Now, one more time. Redecite yourself. So you need to understand when you support something, you should at least find out what it is they stand for fully because ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, Fox, MSNBC, and all the others are not going to tell you. So that when you support in any way in which you do it, 
then you are making a decision to join with whatever you're talking about. When you supported today, Word of Faith, you made a decision to join with our statement of faith. Okay, amen? I'm assuming that's why you did it. Okay, amen. Now, what does the Bible say about what we just read? So let's go to the B-I-B-L-E, turn to Genesis chapter 1. Let's find out what the B-I-B-L-E says about it. Can I get three hallelujah, somebody? Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 says, And God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. There is no slash. There's no hyphen. There is male, female. The next verse tells you why he did it that way. He didn't have to do it that way. Well, let's read, let's read why. Verse 28, God blessed them. God said to them, male and female, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, restock the earth, subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl the air, cattle over all the earth. God said, I want you male and female. I made you male and female so that you could populate and constantly repopulate the earth from which God derives children from. So that you can repopulate the earth. Because we know, amen, that two females will not produce a child. Two males will not produce a child. Amen. What is biblical is that a male desires a female. And a female desires a male. Hallelujah. It is pretty interesting that that is in any way something that is in dispute. Because all you have to do is look at the human body. Amen. And it's clear that the male is blessed with an appendage that fits properly into the receptor of the woman Amen. that allows the seed to go into the woman, Amen. whereby the, the seed and the egg then germinate from the moment of conception. Yeah. And what is produced is another male or female. Amen. That's science. They keep saying, believe the science. <laughs> uh, it's only been that way as long as human beings have been on the earth. It's how you got here, trust me. Everything God does has a purpose and a reason behind it. I don't know what somebody says, wow. Yeah, but they were born that way. Well, I would dispute that, but I ain't got time to get into that right now. But let's just say, let's say even if you were right, if you were right about that, there's the healing power of God. God will heal anything and set you the way you want to be. Amen. And nothing too hard for God. Shout amen, somebody. Amen. Let's read some more. Turn to Romans chapter 1. In fact, while you're in Genesis, let me read one more. Turn to Genesis chapter 2 since I'm here. Then I'll go to Romans 1. Genesis chapter 2, it says in verse 24. I'm going to back up. Back up. Um, let's, let's back up to... Uh, let's first back verse 20. Genesis 2, 20. Adam gave names to all cattle. Adam did. He's not here yet. Adam gave names to all cattle to follow the earth, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. Adam by himself, God said, mm-mm, that ain't good. Everything else God saw, day one through six, okay? Everything else he made, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything he did, he, did, he said, that's good. He made Adam, he saw Adam by himself, he said, nah, that ain't, that ain't going to work. <laughs> Adam, Adam needs some assistance. Come on, somebody. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. He slept, took up. One of his ribs closed up the flesh. Instead thereof, the rib which the Lord God taken from man made he a wall man brought her unto the man. Adam said, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called whoa, ho, 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 man. Because <laughs> she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father, leave his mother, 
shall pursue hard, run after, stick to, is the Hebrew word for cleave, his wife. They shall be one flesh, that's the institution of marriage. They were both naked, the man and his wife were not the same. Amen. So again, we see the progression. Now turn to Romans chapter 1 in the New Testament. Ah, oh, you're just homophobic. First of all, amen. I'm just reading from the Bible. Okay, amen. Your problem is not with me. I am nothing but just a vehicle. I'm reading what the Bible says. Your problem is not with me. Your problem is what I'm reading from the Bible. And if you have a problem with what I'm reading from the Bible, then you have a problem with the author of the Bible. That's where your problem is. You can call him homophobic. I don't have any phobias. I'm healed. <laughs> Glory to God. Romans chapter 1. Now notice what he wrote to the church at Rome. He said here in verse 18, for the wrath of God, wrath means anger. The anger of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness underlying, unrighteousness underlying of men who hold, the word their hold is the word suppress, who suppress the truth. Jesus said in John 17, 17, thy word is truth. So they suppress the Bible in unrighteousness because that which may have been known of God or God's way is apparent unto them. God showed it to them. For the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that we don't have any excuse. Because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they full of gratitude, but became vain in their imaginations. Amen. The word imagination is the word discussion. And their foolish heart was darkened. So vain is empty in their discussions and their dumb heart was made dark. That's what happens. Every time you make a decision not to be thankful what God said, and every time you make a decision to go against God's way, your spirit man becomes darker and darker and you have less light. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, okay, I'm out of time, I know. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, what did he say? He said, now by the faith, hope, and love, these three, the grace of love, but the verse before that, he said, we see through a glass darkly. See, so what happens is you have to have more light to see. The more you get into the word, because Jesus said, thy word is light. So the more word you get, the more light you get, and the more light you get, stuff that you couldn't see or understand before you start seeing it now. You start getting something called wisdom and understanding. Hallelujah. But the more you reject whatever you reject, you get darker and darker and darker till you come to the place where you can't have any light at all and you cannot see it. And that's what allows the four classes to move up the ladder. Satan, Satan's able to get more and more and more of you. The darker things get, the more he gets to grab a part of you. Are you listening to me? Let's keep reading what he says here. Verse 22, professing themselves to be smart, they became stupid and changed the glory of the incorruptible God unto an image made like the corruptible man, birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things, in other words, things you see. Wherefore God also gave them up. Didn't say God did anything to them. It said God gave them up. God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor or despise their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God, the word, into a lie and worship and serve the creature, which is man, more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up unto shameful lust, vile affections. For what is shameful lust? Even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Because it is natural for a woman to be with a man. Okay, amen. Likewise, in the same way, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman. Because the natural use for a man is a woman. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Just something just not right about two guys in bed. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be nice and um, diplomatic and 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 behave myself. And I'm trying to do all that. Come on, somebody. Y'all praying for me, right? This ain't popular nowadays. Now you know. Very unpopular. Amen. The union university say say God's word is wrong. The high school they're teaching says God's word is wrong. The middle schools they're teaching now God's word is wrong. I mean they're up front with this stuff. The elementary schools, they're doing it now. They're even doing it in K3, K4. Even the cartoons. Now you got cartoons with it. Are you listening to me? So the world's getting darker and darker and darker. And when it gets darker and darker and darker, you get more trouble, trouble, trouble. Because you're operating in Satan's way. And Jesus said he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So the darker the world gets, the more problems it's going to have. Keep reading here. Amen. So they burned in their lust one to another. Men with men working that which is unseemingly. Okay. In other words, it doesn't make a whole bunch of sense. And receiving in themselves the recompense or the reward of their error. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they didn't want to acknowledge God. God gave them over. He didn't, he didn't do it to them. He gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which are not convenient. Reprobate mind is a mind that sees things that are right and calls them wrong. It sees things that are wrong, calls them right. No light. So when you read all that in light of the published statements here, and I'm just using them as an example, what he said was examine all things. And what did he say? Hold that which is good. So what you're supposed to do with the rest of it? Get rid of it. Amen. So seven keys to success. Almost done here. So rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. Quit not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Test to prove all things. Hold that which is good. I, I got to get one more on that one. Turn to 1 John chapter 4. I got to give you one more. 1 John chapter 4. Praise the Lord. I'm a little bit over time. Y'all give me an extra five minutes. Okay, thank you. First John chapter four. Notice what he said in verse one. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try them. The word try means test them. Test them with what? With the word. Believe not every spirit. Test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone into the world. Many false prophets or teachings. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, which means that he is, praise God, the Son of God. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh or is not the Son of God, is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Where have you heard that this should come? And even now it is already in the world. You are of God, little children, have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So again, he said, test the spirits. See, examine is another way. So that means you don't just run with whatever way the crowd runs. Okay, amen. You test everything. You get the book out and find out because God's word is right. I said God's word is right. I said God's word is right. Glory to God. And then if you don't know what it says, then find somebody who do, does know what it says. Come here. We'll tell you what it says. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now we go back to Thessalonians and wrap up. Amen. Praise God. Anybody getting anything out of this? Well, they said, well, why don't you use some more stuff that's going on right now? I said, okay. You asked for it. <laughs> Amen. So he said, prove all things. Now here's number seven. Abstain or stop or get away from all appearance of evil. Amen. 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 Get away from it. Praise God. What would happen? 
If you do all these seven things, the very God of Irene, it's the word peace. That's the God of prosperity, the God of quietness, amen, the God of comfort, then sanctifies you. The word sanctify means make you clean, make you holy. He will sanctify you holy. Incidentally, this word holy has an interesting connotation because the Greek word here means makes you complete to the end, absolutely perfect. The closer you come to these seven things, the closer you get to walking in the earth with perfection. Hallelujah. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body, tripart nature of man, spirit, soul, body, be preserved. The word preserved means guard it blamelessly or without error until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. And so you can have one or two views. You can have a Bible world view about everything. Or you can have a view against the Bible world view one way or the other. But you have to choose one or the other. Galatians chapter six. Praise God. My last verse today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the extra time you gave me. here. Uh, amen. Galatians chapter six, verse seven says, be not deceived. First thing Jesus talked about, Matthew 24, the end of days. He said, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man plants or does, that shall he also reap or harvest. He that, that plants to his flesh, allows his flesh to run his life, shall reap ruins, the word corruption. He that plants to the spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for we shall reap if we faint not in due season. At God's right time, amen, you shall reap, amen, from walking his way of perfection. Stand with me, please. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your Lord Jesus. We worship and praise and adore and magnify. Glorify your name. God has always been about you having choice. Deuteronomy 19.30 said, there is set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Then he said, choose. Now, then he advised you which way to choose. He said, choose life that you and your seed may live. So if you examine all things, guess what? You should be examining your kid's school book. You should be examining your course study. Amen. You should be examining what's being taught your child in the class. Oh, yeah. I said, oh, yeah. It's not like when you grew up. They don't teach what you grew up with. They teach something different than what you grew up with. You just assume. Assumption is the mother of all mess up. You just assume what's happening in them classrooms. You better find out what's happening in those classrooms. Are you listening to me? And then you need to talk to your child if you, how many have children. You need to talk to your child when they get home. What you learned today? Tell me about it. And then if it's not correct, you should at least get the Bible out and straighten it out. You need to do it on a daily basis. That's doing what Ephesians said. Ephesians said, train up a child. Proverbs says it too. In the way he should go. Amen. That's right. Amen. He'll not depart from it. But what's happening is there's a competition going on. Yes. A school has your child 30 hours a week of prime time. How many of you spend time with your children, time actually, 30 hours a week? Don't lift your hand because you'd be lying. So they have far more time with your child than you do. And they have more of an influence on your child than you do with time because faith comes by hearing. Not just faith in God. Faith in everything comes by repetitively hearing it again and again and again, which is why by the time they graduate from college and then they're this way and you say, 
Who are you? I didn't teach you that. I didn't raise you that. I took you to church. We only have them if you bring them. If you brought them every week, we only got them two hours a week. Even we got them. Between us and you, we don't come nowhere near 30 hours a week. Are you listening to me? See, and that's why you wind up with a stranger in your house. Or you wound up like I saw somebody on television saying how they hate their parent. Okay. And I know the parent was like just speechless. What do you say when the child that you bore and raised and clothed and fed and everything, then they stand in your face and, and cuss you out and tell you they hate you? How'd that rip the heart out your chest? How does that happen? This is how it happens, indoctrination. Amen? And we're getting it day in, day out. Praise God. Every head's bowed. Every eye's clothed in prayer. I'm sure there's someone watching me right now who doesn't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And there may be someone in this room that's the same way. I want you to know God loves you so very much. Praise God. He gave his only begotten son for you. His blood was shed to wash away your sin. But you have to make a decision to choose him. And I'm going to tell you how you can do that. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if you will acknowledge with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the highest authority of all and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the scripture said you would be saved for with your heart you believe unto righteousness with God. And with your mouth, acknowledgement is made unto your deliverance. The 10th verse said, whosoever, that includes you, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so we're going to pray. There might be also someone watching me or in this room who may say, well, you know, I've known the Lord, but I got away from him, but I want to come back to him. Well, he said, I'll receive you. First John 1, 9 was written to Christians. I believe I quoted it earlier today. Said that we would homologio there. We would acknowledge our sin to him. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you've been cleansed from all unrighteousness, what do you do? You drop the un. What are you? Righteousness again. And so our heads are bowed, eyes are closed in prayer. Watch me in that computer or cell phone or tablet. And bow your head and close your eyes if you can with me. If you want to make Jesus Christ your Lord or get reattached to him, pray with me out loud right now. Everyone do it with me and their support. Pray with me now. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for me on the cross where he carried my sins for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You were put in the grave, but I believe you're risen. You are alive now. Come into my heart. I accept you as my savior and as the master of my life. I repent of sin. I'm sorry, Lord. I accept your offer of forgiveness. Thank God I'm forgiven now. Thank God I'm cleansed now. Thank God I'm restored now. Heaven is my home. Jesus is my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for those who prayed this prayer with me. I ask you to now strengthen them with might in the inward man. May the anointed one and his anointing live big with them by faith. I pray over them shalom, peace, wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. Hallelujah. We thank you for them. In Jesus' mighty name. Everyone in agreement with this prayer said, Amen. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer with me, Jesus Christ of Nazareth now, praise God, is coming to your heart. And my announcer on the screen will tell you how you can get a free book we have offered for you, Where Do I Go From Here? If you're here in the auditorium and this is the first time you pray such a prayer, when I dismiss, we will have ministers here in what we call the blue line, standing here in the front, praise God. And I'd be glad to also give you instructions, help you get that free book, because we love you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, that was an another amazing service. I know that it blessed your life because it blessed me. 
I want to congratulate everybody that made a decision for Jesus Christ. That's the best decision that you can make. There's some information on your screen about what you need to do to receive some free material that we want to send you. This free material will help you with your next step. Also, I want to remind everybody that small groups are starting back up. If you want to join a small group, it doesn't matter if you're single, married, a man or a woman, whatever area of life you're in, we have a small group for you. There's some information on your screen about how you can join a small group. For everybody else, see you next time.